in A Week in Poland, we take you on a tour of some of the most interesting places in this fascinating and rapidly developing country. We start in the ancient heartland of Wielka Polska and its capital Poznan, followed by the historic cities of Torun, Kraków, Gdansk and Warsaw. Your guide for the tour is Daniel Olbryski, one of Poland's most famous actors who has played many of the country's most important historical figures. Today, Daniel will tell you about his Poland. Welcome to Biskupin, the pre-Slavic settlement which was established in 738 BC. At about the same time, when the ancient Greeks were developing their city-state civilization, here, on the soil of present-day Poland, the distant ancestors of today's Poles were also creating a democratic and vivid culture. It was a culture which was meant to ensure growth and protection against the formidable nomadic tribes of Sumerians and Scythians. What was a typical day in this village like? This is a bracelet from Biskupin. Its design, which features geometrical patterns, is typical of Lusatian culture. It is very tiny because it was worn by small people, who were less than five feet tall. Such a bracelet was indicative of high social status, as the metal was very valuable. Lednica, near Gniezno, the first capital of Poland. This is the very place where in the year 966, Poland's first Christian ruler, Duke Mieszko I from the Piast dynasty, chose to be baptized. These days, you can not only touch history here, but in fact experience something more. The place's religious tradition has been the driving force behind annual meetings of young Catholics. This is now a new site of pilgrimage whose patron is Blessed John Paul II, the Polish Pope who had excellent contact with young people. It was Mieszko the first baptism that marked the birth of Poland, and since that time, Christian spirituality has always resonated in the hearts and minds of young Poles. It was Pope John Paul II who first came up with the idea of building a gate, which would be larger than the previous one, to celebrate the onset of the new millennium. As we pass through it, we are reminded that it was the birth of Christ that started the clock of history. So I thought that a gate had to be built, and it should be fish-shaped like the early Christian symbol, Ichtis. Poznan's rise to prime coincided with a deep crisis of the Polish state. Duke Bolesław III, Rai Mouth, did not appoint a single heir to the throne. Following his death, 
in 1138, Poland was split into several principalities ruled by local dukes. One of them, Przemysl II, in an attempt to unify the country, transferred the capital to Poznań and built a huge castle here. After his death, the court moved back to Kraków. However, to honor Poznan's glory days, its proud residents are now meticulously reconstructing the castle, which ceased to exist centuries ago, but served as evidence for the city's capital status. After a long period of fragmentation, Poland was unified in 1320 by King Władysław the Short. Yet the capital never returned to Poznan. Poznan. It is often said that for centuries Poznan has been a city of music. It boasts a huge tradition and I love immersing myself in that tradition. There is of course the Academy of Music which trains fantastic musicians who then set out to conquer the world. There is the Poznan Concert Hall which plays host to excellent concerts given by Polish and international musicians. Then we have the Opera House with a very ambitious program. And then there are the city's famous choirs which are a huge part of Poznan tradition. The Oscar that I won is on display in the Museum of Musical Instruments in the Old Town, where it can stay until I decide I want it back. Poznan's Wawitsa Airport is just seven kilometers from the city center. It has regular connections to over 20 cities and offers a range of car rental services. The area around Poznan is well worth exploring, boasting numerous natural features and historical sites. One of these is the Palace at Rogalin, with its wonderful collection of European paintings, mostly by 19th century Polish and French artists. Nearby is the town of Kurnik, with its picturesque hunting castle, a late 18th century architectural gem built in the English style. The castle is known for its legend of the White Lady, who is said to haunt the tower after midnight. Interesting collections can also be admired in the Museum of Agriculture in Sreniava, which shows the history of one of Yelkopolska's most important industries. The center of Poznan offers a wide range of hotels including numerous three and four star establishments including Italian style accommodation. For those planning a longer stay, an excellent option might be to rent a suite in somewhere such as the city park residence with its great central location. Lovers of nature and tradition meanwhile might like to try one of the many rustic style and agro-tourist hotels outside of the city, such as the Delitzius, 20 kilometers to the south, where you can enjoy a ride in a horse-drawn carriage. Outside of the hotels, Poznan has dozens of great places to eat out. There are also numerous restaurants serving European cuisine, such as the Valpolicella Italian restaurant, which can easily be found in the old town. Poznan's wealth of shopping malls offer all the international brands available in Western Europe. For those seeking an authentic slice of Poland, however, there are numerous stores selling regional foods still made in the traditional ways. The 14th and 15th centuries marked the period of collaboration and struggle with the Teutonic Order of the Hospital of St. Mary, commonly referred to as Teutonic Knights. They had been brought to Poland by Duke Konrad of Mazovia in 1226 to fight the formidable Baltic Prussian Pagan. The Malburg and Torun fortresses 
pearls of European Gothic are still impressive traces of the Teutonic presence in that age. In 1410 and 1466, Poland inflicted defeats on the Teutonic Knights. That showdown culminated in signing the Treaty of Torn. However, it soon turned out that the Teutonic Knights had yet another mission to fulfill. They established a powerful and perfectly organized state of the Teutonic Order, which increasingly posed a threat to Poland. Our reenactment group is three years old. We bring to life the Teutonic Knights, who lived in this area and in Torren Castle from the 13th to the 15th centuries. Mostly we do this for sheer fun. However, we also want to show tourists that the Teutonic Knights were not as bad as they are often viewed, and as some people want to think of them. You see, you can get on well with them and have a good time. This house is the birthplace of Nicolas Copernicus, who was born here on the 19th of February, 1473. It is thanks to him that people gained basic insights into the workings of the solar system. He was the first man to prove that the Earth goes around the Sun, which is in the center of the universe. He included these claims in his revolutionary work, the Revolutionibus Orbium Celestrum. Copernicus came from the Polish merchant family, studied in Italy and served as a Catholic canon at Fromburg. Torun is a place where we can still meet outstanding astronomers who discover new planets. Since about 2007, we have found around 10 stars with planets. This is still a fascinating study, as we know of very few such cosmic bodies. In this way, we are broadening the scope of the research pioneered by Copernicus, who in a way discovered our planetary system, rightly calling it the solar system. He also established the orbits of the planets known in his time. Today, we are finding a lot more of such objects in the universe. So this is how we are continuing our great forerunner's research. Wieża zegarowa na wysokość 16 kondygnacji, to jak 16-piętrowy Rising above Torren's old town is the 16-story clock tower, which is a truly special sight. The hands of the clock, which you can just see, are made of gilded metal using six and a half kilograms of gold, which was donated by members of the Polish community worldwide. This is the only tower of its kind, and it is quite different from church towers of a similar age. It is also one of the few towers in Europe with four clock faces, which look out in the four cardinal directions. The architectural design and the reconstruction work on this tower caused a great deal of discussion and debate. As you can see, it is made of wood, and this wood was made to look weathered in order to imitate the original wood and clock faces from several centuries ago. Imitować drewno i tarcze, która mogła tu funkcjonować setki lat temu. Toruń is a scene of a never-ending campaign to save the city's Gothic beauty. Various military conflicts and communist regime were not kind to this city. The Nazis destroyed the old town, and further damage was done by the communists, who built ghastly modern blocks in the neighborhood of medieval buildings. Today the Gothic buildings call for restoration.
Polish Italian engineer Michel Yamełkowski recently saved the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Thanks to his solution, the tower stopped moving and was declared stable for the next 300 years. There is a similar problem here. According to many people, especially on the internet, one of Torren's greatest features is its skyline. Naturally, everything that goes on there is subjected to historical constraints. A recent example is the Boulevard Hotel, which won the 2009 Facility of the Year Award in a competition organized by the mayor of Torren. The hotel is located in a former army barracks, which was extended during the conversion process. One of the best hotels in Torun is the Boulevard Hotel. Built in the early 19th century for the Prussian army, it has a state-of-the-art interior, resulting in an interesting combination of the past and the present. Then there are a number of boutique hotels, which perfectly match the landscape of the old town tenement buildings. Pierogi, or Polish dumplings, is one of the most popular and best-loved dishes in this part of Europe. In every corner of Poland, you will find a restaurant serving this food, and Torun is no exception. What people generally don't know is that the distinctive and traditional shape of pierogi dates to the time when they were served as ritual food. In central Torun, you will find a number of European and Italian-style restaurants, which are always tastefully designed and are in keeping with the Gothic ambience of the area. Fast food establishments, though, are more difficult to come by. The city also has plenty to offer to bargain hunters. Both Torun and the nearby city of Bidgoszcz have a number of convenient shopping malls like Cometa and Rondo, while there are also places for more stylish shoppers, such as the Drukania Fashion House. There was a time when Poland was one of the most powerful countries in the world. In the 16th century, during the reign of King Sigismund I of the Jagiellonian dynasty and his successors, Poland stretched from the Baltic to the Black Sea. Called the Commonwealth at the time, it was a strong and modern state whose predominance was reinforced by an invincible army and unique culture which drew on Italian trends and was open to the East. It was Poland's golden age. The capital of this part of Europe was Kraków, the seat of Polish kings residing at Wawel. The power of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth made the Russian Tsars and Ottoman Sultans shiver. <laughs> There's a special school of thought in these parts which we call Krakorologia. It preaches the superiority of Krakow over the rest of Poland and the world. And you might say that this is indeed the case. If we go over some historical facts, you will see that many of the most important things in the history of Poland, Europe, and even the whole world have their roots here in Krakow. The earliest known depiction of the wheel, for instance, was found several kilometers away, and the city boasts a number of firsts. The first female students were admitted to the university in 1827. Nowhere else in the world did that seem possible. 
and yet here we had ladies studying pharmacy at Krakow University. It is also here in Krakow that from the tower of St. Mary's Church, at a height of 54 meters, the tallest place of its kind in Poland, a bugle call is played every hour by a trumpeter. This has been broadcast on the radio since 1927, making it the world's oldest music program. Finally, the enchanting Old Town Market is the birthplace of baseball. The earliest mention of this bat and ball game in Poland, which was originally called Palant, comes from 1421. From Poland, the game spread to Germany and Bohemia, and then centuries later, across the Atlantic to America. Baseball wywanderował do Jankesów na drugą część świata. Każda kamienica all of the tenement buildings have cellars, and they all look different from one another. With the passing of time, they have all become so unique. Their architectural design and structure are fantastic, and people still conduct their day-to-day -day business here. The cellars are teeming with students, business people, artists, and of course tourists. It's a crack of specific phenomenon. Oczywiście turystów, bo to jest fenomen, fenomen krakowski. Poland strength in the golden age derived from openness to other religions and nations. Poland drew refugees from other countries. The Hasid reformers persecuted in the neighboring Bohemia, as well as Jews roaming Europe, they all found shelter here. Poland tolerated its exiles, who in return worked hard and offered new ideas in such areas as trade, economy and science. Nowhere else in Europe could Jewish culture flourish as successfully as in Poland. The most beautiful Jewish monuments can be seen in the Kraków district of Kazimierz. Today, the, all the synagogues, once devastated by the Nazis in a World War II, are back in the hands of their former hosts. Trade flourished here in the past. The Jews always had a knack for this kind of business. But our Polish neighbors helped us, making deliveries and purchases. So we had to get along somehow, whether we liked it or not. This photo was taken in the woods. This is what I looked like at six years of age. We were hiding in the forest, about 30 kilometers away from Krakow. It was the time of the Holocaust. I survived this horrific period, mostly thanks to the Poles. Ten straszny okres to byli Polacy. The most important thing that helps you survive is the firm conviction that what you are doing is right. This is something that you do not realize at the beginning, but you learn it with time. This feeling was shared by many religious martyrs, and in particular, the first Christians. I had the feeling that my suffering made sense, because I was suffering for something that I knew I was right about and not my persecutors. We blanked them, so to speak. I knew I would survive because it was me who was right, not them. Of all cities in Central Europe, Kraków is, besides Prague, the most popular tourist destination. It is not only the city sites such as the old town market square, Wawel and the Barbican that attract visitors. 
they also want to get insights into recent history. Every year, several thousand Jews come here on a pilgrimage to see Holocaust-related places where the Nazis murder millions of people, mostly Jews and Poles. The young Israelis learn not only about the history of their nation, but also about contemporary Poland. Likewise, young British, French and Germans who come here in droves. The city has become a capital of clubbing. Krakow's John Paul II International Airport is the second busiest in the country, with two terminals and connections to around 60 cities worldwide. For centuries, Krakow has bewitched visitors with its charm. Nowadays, it offers them a wide range of three, four and five-star hotels, in many of which you can really feel the historic past. This one, for instance, is near the main market square in a tenement house with a distinctive courtyard and decoration echoing 19th century Krakow. While in Krakow, an absolute must is a visit to Wieliczka and its famous salt mine about 20 kilometers from the city. Dating from the Middle Ages, the mine is a huge underground complex, complete with a sanatorium specializing in respiratory problems and a chapel, all carved into the salt. And if you decide to stay for the night, the Grand Sal Hotel, in the reconstructed former salt baths, is perfectly located next to the entrance to the mine. For 123 years, until 1918, Krakow was part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire and this history is reflected in the menus of the local restaurants, many of which, such as Pod Anjoem, are located in medieval cellars. Other tastes are catered for as well in the many restaurants serving international cuisine, such as Corleone and Lo Scandal. With its southern location close to the mountains, Krakow is known as Poland's capital of healthy eating. Locally produced organic and free-range products are widely available in the numerous natural food shops on the high street and in malls such as Krokus. And near to Krokus, in the north of the city, is one of the region's most popular leisure facilities, the Aqua Park. It is here in Gdańsk that the new Poland and the new Europe began. In 1970, workers from the Lenin shipyard took to the streets. The scale of the protest, which was bloodily suppressed though, was unparalleled in the Eastern Bloc. In 1980, the shipyard workers went on strike which led to the establishment of the Solidarity Trade Union. The social movement was later instrumental in the collapse of communism in Poland and in other countries of Central and Eastern Europe. And so Lenin, the shipyard's patron, had to witness the fall of the system that he himself had created. Solidarity became a worldwide symbol of a social movement defeating a dictatorship in a bloodless manner. Today it serves as an inspiration for freedom fighters in Belarus and 
Cuba. We finally have an independent and autonomous trade union. If I were to sum up in one sentence what people were thinking at the time, I'd say that practically everybody, not only the workers, thought that the communists were mismanaging our factories and our economy. And it was also about exploitation. In Western European shipyards, for instance, the labour cost for building a ship was about 40% of the total. In Poland, it was just 4%. The Amber Road dates back to the time of Jesus Christ. It was down that trade route that Amber, mostly found in the Baltic Sea, traveled from what is now Poland to ancient Rome. <laughs> the road began probably here, in Gdańsk. This city had long been a center of amber trade and processing. Nowhere else in the world can you see and buy such beautiful amber as here on the Gdańsk seashore. Since time immemorial, women have wanted to wear amber jewelry. Amber is a fossil resin, which is a product of extinct trees that grew here millions of years ago. Uh, something very specific for the Polish design that is a mixture of amber and simple pro silver products and this kind of art art um, artistic expression is very specific and very unique for the Polish uh, artists and craftsmen. They, uh, in the 60s, in late 60s, they developed a special technique to melt silver and to um, uh, grasp amber within the silver uh, surrounding. So they were able to make uh, like a composition of both materials. Uh, of course, I, I'm not going to say that uh, the necklaces are made of amber are, were not produced. They were still produced as, as a general, very old tradition. Uh, we have uh, the sources and remains of in the 14th century. But uh, I would say that this mixture of uh, silver and amber is very specific for the Polish region and as a Polish product. I think that Gdansk is a magical and fascinating city. It has an excellent location on the Baltic coast, on the Bay of Gdansk, where the Matva Wisła River and its tributary, the Motwawa, flow down into the city centre. And it has an exquisite marina right here, within walking distance of the old town. New marinas are being set up as well, with two due to be built in the Gurka Zahudnia district. New marinas are being set up as well, with two due to be built in the Gurka Zahudnia district. We have as many as six sailing clubs, each of which has a marina. You can moor your yacht there and then sail away from there. They also have sailing schools for children and young people. In the 1920s and 1930s, Gdynia seaport was Poland's only window into the world. Its construction program involved a great deal of effort on the part of the whole nation. The new port became a symbol of Poland's presence on the world seas. Today it plays host to a number of marine events. It is from here that Polish voyagers sail out to other seas. The beauty of the coast makes a lasting impression on tourists. 
the vast sandy beaches and coastal forest attract millions of visitors every season. Lech Wałęsa International Airport is situated close to the center of Gdansk in the district of Matania and is the fourth largest in Poland. Gdansk, together with Sopot and Gdynia, form the Troy Miasto or Tri-City, which offers accommodation catering for all tastes and budgets. Some of the most unusual is offered by the Gdansk Academy of Music in its Dom Muzyka and Dom Sonata guest houses just outside the old town. A stay here means that you can catch some of the free concerts offered by the students. These were originally built for the Prussian army in 1880. For a more regal setting, you could try the restored 18th century palace in Lezhno, a little further outside the center. Alternatively, at the other end of the Tri-City in Gdynia, you can find plenty of two- and three-star hotels such as the Amber and the Morski. And in between Gdansk and Gdynia lies the fashionable resort of Sopot, playground to the rich and famous during the interwar years and now home to many plush hotels such as the Dvorak. For something a little different, the port of Gdynia offers a variety of restaurants specializing in Mediterranean and Balkan cuisine. One of these is Fellini, which is famous for its cordon bleu and is said to serve the finest lamb in the country. It's also well known for its sweet bread and creme brulee. For eating out, Gdansk and Sopot offer many traditional Polish restaurants serving meat-based dishes. One of these is Harnasz in Sopot, which is known for its Tatra Mountain specialities. And for shoppers, the Tri-City offers a range of designer boutiques as well as a number of newly built shopping arcades. Warszawa, in English Warsaw, has deservedly earned its capital status. In the 19th century, when Poland was under Russian, Prussian and Austrian occupations, Warsaw was the seat of major resistance institutions and secret military commands of the national uprisings. In the 20th century, the city underwent its biggest ordeal. The Nazis embarked on a plan to completely destroy the city by raising it to the ground and killing the nation's elite. This cruel plan did not materialize. The bloodiest act of the Warsaw tragedy was the 1944 uprising, which was proclaimed by the Polish underground state to accelerate the Nazi defeat. The insurgents were not aided by the Red Army, who waited on the city's outskirts. Stalin halted its offensive too let the revolt be suppressed by the Nazis who slaughtered 20,000 insurgents and 150,000 civilians. Yet Warsaw survived and became a symbol of Poland's struggle for independence from Soviet domination between 1945 and 1989. This replica of a Liberator bomber was constructed using the remains of an original machine flown by Captain Shostak 
which was shot down near Krakow on its way back from an airdrop mission. We managed to find the original parts of the aircraft, some of which were being used to prop up farm buildings in a nearby village. As you can see, we have incorporated parts of the metal that was twisted when it hit the ground. There were many different kinds of liberators, and this one was flown to Warsaw to bring aid and supplies by a Polish crew who served under British command. Sadly to say, everyone on board was killed. Ninety percent of Warsaw was razed to the ground. Fortunately, most of the underground infrastructure escaped destruction, but the buildings were, as I said, ninety percent destroyed. As soon as the city was liberated, in February and March 1945, there were some rebuilding efforts, and finally the capital city reconstruction office was set up. The idea that Warsaw should be rebuilt immediately caught on, despite some alternative views that the city ruins should be left untouched as a cruel reminder. One of the first projects advocated by the Reconstruction Office was the pre-war 1936 Urban Development Plan, which had won a prestigious award at the World Fair in Paris. The 1990s mark a new stage in the history of Warsaw. The city started to blossom. In the neighborhood of the 1955 Palace of Culture and Science, once dubbed a gift from the Soviet people, there are now glass and aluminum skyscrapers, restored historical buildings, and state-of-the-art housing estates. The city's pride are the University Library and the new National Stadium. The three million metropolis of Warsaw is growing prettier day by day. It is gradually reclaiming its former nickname, the Paris of the East. After the United Kingdom and Italy, Poland has the largest number of satellite TV networks in Europe. The Warsaw Stock Exchange is the leader on the markets of Central and Eastern Europe. Warsaw is now the capital of a wealthy and thriving European country. It boasts a number of sites and serves as a model city for others to follow. Warsaw is served by Chopin Airport, also known as Okencia. It is the largest in Poland and is situated just 10 kilometers from the center. Warsaw offers a very wide range of accommodation at all standards with numerous three, four and five star hotels. However, those who are looking for something less conventional might enjoy a stay at the Harenda, which is situated in a 19th century tenement building on the fashionable Krakowskia Przedmieścia Street. There are also British-style hotels such as the Lord and the Windsor, which is housed in a luxurious modern palatial building located in the woods by Zegzia Lake, just north of Warsaw. Being the capital, there are, of course, numerous restaurants offering excellent Polish and European cuisine, some of which make you feel as if you were on a theatre stage or a film set. Halka, for instance, looks like an opera house decorated with folk art exhibits. Others, such as Alla Gloria, located on Czech Szczyzi Square, have typical Slavic-style rustic interiors, while 
Basilishek in the Old Town recaptures the spirit of 19th century bourgeoisie Warsaw. However, if you don't want to go quite so far back in time, check out the communist-themed Czerwony Vieps Inn and enjoy the excellent duck or pork shank amongst the socialist-realist paintings and sculptures. Also nearby is another inn, Folk Gospoda, with decor inspired by the verse of Grochowiak, a famous urban poet. And after your meal, it is easy to find a place to shop. Warsaw is a good place to spend leisure time, gaining insights into Polish history and taking advantage of a wide range of cultural opportunities.